Our guest today is Meinl Symbols artist Gerwin Eisenhower. One of our symbol artists from Germany, Gerwin was only a phone call away on WhatsApp. Our Wi-Fi connection was good, and our chat was even better. I was pleased to find that Gerwin was just as interesting to speak with as his drumming is to watch and listen to. I'd never spoken with Gerwin before, so it was a treat for me that he had a lot to share, and all of it being grounded in a kind and joyful outlook on life and music. If you follow our content on our socials, you may have seen videos of Gerwin and his band Trio Elf laying down an incredibly cool mixture of electronica, jazz, and other subgenres thrown in for good measure, resulting in something extremely musically adventurous. Gerwin's ability to sound like half man, half machine is really something to see. And how he fits that into a band setting is even something more to see. Gerwin has toured the world and played with many great musicians along the way. But despite all that he's experienced, that not everyone else gets to experience, he remains a very easygoing and humble kind of guy, and also a very talented musician. Let's get to our conversation. Enjoy the podcast. So I'd like to welcome everybody into the Minel Radio Podcast. Today we've got Minel Symbols artist Gerwin Eisenhower. Gerwin, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, I'm very happy and glad uh, to do this. Perfect. Man, you know, I, um, I've really enjoyed your videos that you've done with Mino. Um, I think you've really surprised a lot of people with how unique your playing style is. And so based off of uh, that pleasant surprise, I came up with a bunch of questions to ask you, and I'm just going to kind of go in no particular order, okay? Okay, that's totally fine. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm guessing, I'm just going to take a guess here. I'm guessing that you grew up in the 80s, correct? Right. Okay. <laughs> so did you grow up in West or East Germany? West Germany. Okay. Did you like electronic music back when you were growing up in the 80s? Actually, in the 80s, I, well, I was like more a, a rock and roll kid. I like in the, like all these synth bands like uh, Depeche Mode and the Patch Up Boys and all this stuff. I was, uh, that was not quite my cup of tea at that time. But uh, I, I was more like to, into the the real rock handmade thing. The stuff with the electronic music actually came later. It actually, it was like at the end of the '90s when I got uh, in like into electronic music and 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 also in a very different way because uh, I uh, um, I tell you the story a little bit. It was like. Uh, I played at that in the 90s. I played a lot of l jazz, Afro Cuban music, Brazilian music. I toured with Dave Valentine, the great flute player. I toured with Leo Traversa and, and, and all these Latin jazz fusion uh, kind of artists. And at the end of the 90s, I began to have that feeling that the, the, that the music didn't. Uh, touch me that much and then i remember that i got this record from that a friend gave me from Zach danziger and tim lefay uh, and the band was called boomish and they played live drum and bass and this was so uh that touched me so much and it was so different that i began to listen to not actually all kind of electronic music but to drum and bass and and I loved it. And then I also thought about like how to uh, play that on 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 the drum uh, drum kit. And it was the whole scene, the whole vibe was really appealing to me. So when you say that you had just remembered that you had this CD that was given to you of Zach and Tim, yes. how long had that CD been sitting around before you just before you decided just to put it in one day? <laughs> Actually, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was. I, I, I just remember the cover. There was a cow on it, and uh, and it reminds me on the the famous uh, Tom Hart Mother cover of Pink Floyd, which was actually one of my favorite albums in in, in when I when I grew up in the eighties. I remember sitting alone in my room and uh, having a cup of tea and listening to the uh, a Tom Hart Mother album, and then I was thinking, okay, what is this? boomish with the cow and then if when i put it in i, I just remember when sack started this beat 
and I couldn't imagine at that point like it because drum and bass music jungle was something that was completely electronic it was uh programmed but there were people in new york city of course who started to play that stuff live and that became like a, a, a and i was l like really thrilled and that that was the start point when i thought about like how i want to i want to do that too that i love that and so zach's playing on that album boomish was it all on an acoustic kit and I think the first album was all on an acoustic kit, and it was it, it was not like uh, like real. It was it was drum and bassy, but it was also a, a crazy. And they 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 put like a very different kind of textures in the music, and it was so uh, refreshing uh, because the especially at that time I thought that the whole jazz and fusion scene got a little bit. Stuck duck and i got a, a little bit bored of the whole thing actually i was afraid at that point uh that i could lose my my fun on 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 music and 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 playing and i was really searching for something different and the whole electronic scene seemed to be uh, so uh, cool and 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 different and and also of course, drum and bass. To play drum and bass, you gotta have a certain technique. But the whole electronic scene, the electronic music scene, was so without ego. Because if you do something on a computer, you can always make it faster. It's just you turn the knob uh, and and it goes faster. The whole thing, electronic. I, I loved it in a certain way because there were so many different kind of uh, vibes that were so different from 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 the jazz rock whatever uh, scene and and actually it saved me in a, a certain way to find an, an, a new kind of direction mm. so you mentioned uh listening to adam hart mother and that you loved that record um yeah. this is just kind of a brief aside but it made me think of it so Pink Floyd in the 90s released a record in 94 called The Division Bell, and it was without Roger Waters. It was basically David Gilmour and Richard Wright. And right. There, were, there was a whole second record that they recorded at that time that they never released until a few years ago called The Endless River. Did you hear that? No. Okay. So but I wanna. <laughs> well, it's mostly instrumental, and it's basically like a showcase for Richard Wright and his just beautiful uh -huh. keyboard textures. So you immediately made me think of that. And I thought, man, if Gerwin doesn't know about this album, he needs to hear it because it's, I can imagine it being some music that you could easily lay your own uh, rhythmic percussive foundation behind and just have fun practicing too, just for fun. Great. I, w I will definitely uh, get it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful album. Um, wow. So at what point, now you've heard this stuff, it was refreshing for you, it saved you, yes. as you said. What was the first time, do you remember the moment where you sat down on a drum kit after hearing this and taking it in and being inspired, and you picked up your sticks and you did something differently on your kit, or maybe you added a little piece somewhere or turned mm -hmm. something over? What was that first moment where you played it, you played what inspired you and you tried to replicate that sound of inspiration? I, I pretty much actually I remember that when I, I was sitting down on my regular drum kit and the first thing I, I tried to play like a a regular drum and bass beat very easy and the first thing I remember was okay I play the notes but it doesn't sound right it doesn't so i first started to like uh like tune the the snare as high as possible but at, at the next one it, did, it still didn't sound that way so i bought me a 10 inch snare because i thought it's it's also it's it's not only what you play it's also on on what you play the thing and then everything when i started to thinking how can i uh get that sound and that that special vibe and that was also the point when i because when i thought about okay i wanna sound like a, a, 
a little bit like a, a drum machine and if you take like like the aim and break and and all these uh the, the the drum beats from from drum and bass and jungle there's so many snares and hi-hats and and things going on so i thought okay i uh, i my i just have two hands and two feet and one of the the signature things were like the 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 constant eight note hi-hat flow at a certain tempo it was always about 160 to 100 75 sometimes 180 bpm and i thought okay if i want to do all these uh things on the snares and the cymbals and 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 stuff i i just have one hand left if i have these eighth notes in the right hand for example so i thought how about that my left foot is pretty much um sometimes a little bit uh, there's not too much going on there so i thought about okay if i instead of play on the hi-hat uh, the eighth notes i i will uh, do that with my foot so i have two my two arms uh to do all these other uh, roles and and stuff and then i start to develop that and that was uh i think for me that was one of the points where i got a little bit into that style and uh, that is now a kind of a signature of my playing so but all this took i think it took at least one and a half years it was like uh, uh like uh, to to develop the left foot that doesn't come overnight and it's not a thing of 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 one and a half weeks or something Right, I understand. So it wasn't yeah. so much just getting a 10-inch snare drum and you were off to the races. It was more about no. that That kind of made you realize, okay, there's kind of some sound I can work with here, but now it's more about, it's kind of like how tone comes from your fingers as a guitar player. So tone comes from your fingers and, and your wrist as a drummer. Um, right. And so you had to develop this sort of sound to come from your body. Right. It's diff it's it's not only it's it's the drums, it's the cymbals, but it's also uh to n to know uh also it, it's to know the music and that's also a very important thing. A lot of people tried to do electronic music because it was hip at a certain time. Uh, like to to put like some house beats or or hip hop or drum and bass beats into jazz and whatever, but they didn't they didn't study the stuff. I, I was also there. I I started to transcribe uh, beats that were actually not played but programmed because I, I I think it was so cool. And then I tried to emulate that on the on the drums, which was uh, sometimes sometimes it was even impossible because you just have two hands that that that. And that, then we come to the next point. To me, it was important not uh, to have this sound and this uh, this idea of that grooves, but I wanted to play with musicians. I I, I didn't want to. I started to to as especially for practice purposes to 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 play on raves with DJs. But the the end at the end of the night, I wanted to uh, incorporate. The, these grooves and feels into a into a live setting with live playing musicians. Hmm. Was it difficult for you to find musicians to play with? Because at that point, you'd probably been playing a lot of um, jazz and world music, correct? Right, right. Okay, so was it difficult yeah. finding musicians who were open-minded enough to allow this thing to come into their... World? Yeah, it was not it was not easy uh, because like like when I was in the eighties, I I was like uh, like one of these guys who loved uh, handmade music, like everything that was more or less just from a computer or a synthesizer. I was a little bit nah, I don't know, and and it it didn't touch me. And the same happens also with uh with with a lot of jazz or rock musicians who they 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 don't think of uh like all kinds of electronic music that it's also a, a kind of music that you have to study you have to listen to it you have to understand the textures and everything it's not that you uh s do some crazy slapping over a 180 bpm drum and bass beat it's not it's not right and and 
and it doesn't feel right for me so the, also and it's not easy to to get musicians and to tell you the story it was like i was playing like on raves uh like with a with a, with the dj and i played on top of that uh, stuff improvising and then i I like invited other musicians like uh, piano players who played Fender Rhodes so sometimes they, they were a DJ a Fender Rhodes player some studied that music and they, they did very well also bassists and that's actually how my band came together because I had this guy Walter Lang and at that point Sven Faller who was the first bass player it a trio elf and with these guys it worked and i remember this one night when we played at a rave and the people were dancing there was a dj piano bass and drums and then actually the, the dj had to go to the toilet so we played alone and the people still were dancing and 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 so i thought okay with these guys it it works and that was actually the start point of my band trio elf when we uh, uh, that we thought okay we don't need a dj we start to compose now music that works with these kind of beats and with these kind of textures and this is now i think it's that's already like 14 years ago or something or 15 uh, no 20 almost 20 years ago uh, it was in 2002 or 2003 when we first started to to do that stuff and but that was basically the the story man i got to tell you what i've heard so far from what you've been telling me it's really neat so i've heard two instances where these random things happened that really and it's the way life works but it's neat uh, these two yeah. random things happened that just sort of like rocket launched you into the next phase of your musical life and one right. of them was an album you'd been given and you just happened to be listening to Pink Floyd, though, and thought of the similarity between album covers and bam, suddenly you're really right. inspired. And the next thing is that a DJ goes to the toilet and now all of a sudden you realize you've got a band. I mean, that's really yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes these uh, strange things in life that are happening, even on stage or off stage, uh, and it and it brings people, artists, musicians into into a certain direction. Yeah, it's oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's funny. Um, so I'm going to jump around a bit because now that you've been saying some stuff, it made me think about uh, some different things. Now you've been with Trio L for pretty much almost 20 years now. Yes. You guys have toured uh, globally. You put out multiple records. Right. Now, I think you told me that there's been a change in band members. So you've, but for the most part, it's been a pretty consistent lineup, correct? Right. Okay. Right. It's just the bass players are always the problem. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How many bass players have you gone through? No, no. Actually, we have uh, now it's the, uh, we have the third bass player. And, uh, and yeah, the uh, Walt and me are like together since that time. And, uh, uh, to be perfect, there was uh, the the bass players sometimes didn't want to tour anymore, and that was okay. the big problem. So so uh, it wasn't a, often not a, a, a musical or a thing, but some some uh, sometimes worked. But now with Sebastian Geek from Berlin, it's perfect. It's 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 great. Okay, so my yeah. question is, what would your advice be for making a, such a collaboration last as long as Trio Elf has lasted? Actually, um, the good thing about, uh, I think to be, uh, to have a band that exists now for 20 years, which is actually pretty, pretty long, is um, first of all, besides of the musical thing, you, if you're, we, we play, we toured the whole world and you're uh, very close to each other, you have to, to be become kind of friends or something otherwise it doesn't work uh, because you it's not that, uh, that you're just on stage you travel you you're you're from airport to airport if 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 the other if you can't stand each other and you can't laugh about the same things and and if you have a totally different lifestyle that that wouldn't work you, you I think it's it's very important that you get along with each other well. That's the basic point to 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 have that band. Of course, you need uh, 
from the musical point you you have all have to like what you do together together on stage but i wouldn't i've played with bands where where sometimes uh uh people were a pain in the ass but uh, uh and and it didn't didn't work work out for long even if it was musically great uh, it's uh If you're on the road, it's like a it's like a family, and and you have to get along with each other. Mm. So the the real takeaway is be cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Right. Uh, let's jump back for a second. Give us the yes. quick version of your early musical training. Okay, I when uh, when I I wanted to become. Um, wanted to play an instrument the first instrument i would loved uh, would i what i would have loved to play was the clarinet because i when i was nine or ten years old i saw the benny goodman story which was a a movie and i thought that was so cool i loved the sound of the clarinet but they but then the uh, some people said that i will never be able to play the cl clarinet very well because of my teeth I have no idea if they were right, if there's one, but they said it doesn't work with your mouth. So I, so I was so uh, sad that I went to a music store with my parents and I bought the biggest, I wanted to have the biggest instrument that they had and that was a drum kit. And then I, I started to take lessons and I remember like I, I was, I grew up in a small city with 30,000 people and there was one drummer there and uh, his name was Uli Knot and he was also one of the first guys who went to Los Angeles uh, in the I think it was the end of the of the 70s beginning of the 80s or something to study at the PIT at that time with uh, he studied with Joe Pocaro and and he came back and he was like the Without him, nothing would have been the same. I would not be where I, where I am now. He uh, he taught me like all the basics, and I'm still very very grateful to all that he did. And then I started with him for about five six years till till I was 16. Then I I went to Munich, which was the next biggest city, about a hundred miles from my hometown. And I took lessons there. I took lessons with uh, Wolfgang Hafner in Nuremberg, which was also close to me. And then, uh, with like, I, I started to play in rock and roll bands, in school bands, like everything. I had played in a drum ensemble. And then uh, that was the more and more. I I thought about I want to become a musician. So I went to workshops and in Ingolstadt where they had this jazz workshop and also and more and more I, I thought about yeah I want to become a musician and uh, instead of like going to the regular school regularly I spent more time in my rehearsal uh, space woodshedding and with 20, 21 I told my mom now I want to go to New York City to study there and And I went to the uh, Drummers Collective. And that was like also the next big point. Because remember, like that was in 1990. And in 1990, there, there were no internet, nothing. There were a few drum books and, and a few guys you, you could study with. But uh, but all I wanted to learn something about Latin, Afro-Cuban music. I wanted to hear that. There in Germany, there uh, where I was, there were, were no 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 clubs that played that. Uh, and you, it's it was not like today. You go to the internet and you find everything. It was hard to find records with that uh, with that kind of music. So I thought I want to go to where everything is happened. So I went to New York, and after all, I think it was the best decision I, I made in my life going to new york was the best decision you made yes yeah how, how long were you there for actually i was there for uh, almost three years with some stops back and and forth because i had to go back to uh, stop sorry I, i touched the microphone i had to go back to uh study uh, to to do some work because i had no money i uh, and you were not allowed to work in the states so 
first uh, uh, I had to go back, work a little bit, then go back to, to New York, study. And it was a, a, a great time in the beginning of the 90s in, in New York. It was uh, a wonderful scene. There were like, like even Chaco Pastorius was was doing classes at the collective at that time, and 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 all all these great Brazilian drummers like Duduca da Fonseca, Bobby Sanabria, Frankie Malabe, who just who passed away uh, already, they were all there, and it, for me it was like heaven because I could ask all these people what 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 I what I wanted to 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 know, and they were. It was it was like paradise, and mm. every night you could go to a club in in New York, and you could see in the one ah uh, Eddie Gomez is playing with uh, Steve Gadd there, in the, and then later on go there, and usually the. There were people they they knew us and we, they knew that we were students, so they they didn't charge the the whole thing. And you could all see all your heroes, just like uh, from two meters away. And it was uh, to me, it was not only the learning thing; it was also to to be in that in that scene. And a lot of musicians that I I'm still playing and working with, like. Leo Traversa, a bass player from New York City, and uh, Lincoln Goins, and all this stuff, all these relations, Bobby Quarant, the piano player, all these relations stay till now. So, and, and it's now like, like 30 years ago. And mm. we're still friends and play. Was it hard for you to leave New York to go back to Germany, or was it just time? Uh, it was, uh, there were actually two hearts. First of all, I had a a girlfriend at home and I wanted to be with her. The other thing was I, I knew that I, because the, because of the restrictions and everything, I could not just stay there and work. It was sure. impossible. So yeah. I thought, uh, yeah, I, I have to go back. But as uh, I, I'm, if I'm not at least one or two times a year there for a certain time, I'm still I'm. Uh, I start to miss it very, very much. Mm. Yeah, no, I understand. Now, you play so many styles of music. Uh, you've learned at least so many styles. Which style do you feel is the the foundation that your musical house was built on, and which one is your greatest love to to play? Mm. I I started to. I I think I, I was a. a I started like with rock and roll. I was a, a, a rock and roll drummer. Then I went into jazz and fusion. Actually, more, more like all these fu fusion kind of thing, funk, uh, funky stuff, uh, and so. And I, I'm not very known as a, as a jazz jazz drummer. That was actually also not the thing I'm. I was so so much into. But now nowadays now I'm. I mean I'm getting. Uh, 53 this year I especially in these times when I had a lot of time to practice I I thought about all my weaknesses and started to actually uh, work on that stuff that I, uh, to incorporate certain things into my music so I I was beginning like even late to check out more Again, like John Coltrane and uh, McCoy Tyner and all these guys. Especially, I was ne never a very good or, or big time uh, uh, up tempo uh, swing player, and I, I, I because because I had no no use for it. I wasn't called for that gigs. But I thought, yeah, it, maybe this is something because I still I love that music. I love Coltrane and so, and I, I like just the, the last weeks when I was woodshedding, I was just checking out all these recordings and play along with them, and uh, and it's like an old love that came back in a in in a in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And also I started to 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 do some which I'm also not good at. I started to. To work on my double bass kind of thing, for especially for drum and bass, there is uh, I have a certain use for it, but I, I had never the time to work on that stuff like really 
uh, constantly. But the last week with all the shutdown and stuff, I had uh, I had some time, and it was it was very I gained a lot out of it. Hmm. Wow. Now you're an instructor at a music college called Regensbury Music College. Is that right? Right. Okay. So I read about a program <clears throat> that you're a part of there called New Sacred Music. What is that all uh, about? Th- yeah, this is like this is not at the music college. It's at the uh, uh, at the uh, college for uh, uh, actually for church music, and they called they called me to do uh, to work there. It's a completely new class and. Uh, and a completely n- new subject. They, uh, the the church wanted to uh, have uh, uh, studies for a new kind of church music that is uh, uh, incorporates all the styles that are uh, like ex- actually happened the last. I would say almost uh, 60, 70, 80 years. So the students should be able to know about jazz, funk, electronic music, new modern uh, avant-garde uh, music to make, uh, in, and I mean church music, uh, like from Bach till uh, whatever, they, it's on a high, was on a high, high uh, artistic level. and. Nowadays, sometimes, the, uh, and I don't talk about gospel, which is a total great, wonderful uh, thing, but especially here in Europe, there are certain new church music that that has not, to my and many other people's opinion, the same artistic uh, thing uh, ha- happening so they we teach now young com- uh, composers and musicians to work on a new kind of music that could work especially in that area and it's the we have now it's the first time that we do about that uh, that we do that and it's i think Maybe the next uh, two or three years, we will see how everything will work out and what kind of new music will come out of that classes. Now, is this for <clears throat> a Lutheran <coughs> church, a Catholic church, or a non-denominational? It's a ca- Catholic church uh, college, but it, it would work, of course, in, in all these kind of things. Wow, that's totally interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, the videos that you've produced and that Meinl has produced, they've had yes. a lot of views on all of the socials. Um, I've noticed from time to time that you jump in and that you dialogue with people. And always, without fail, you're always very kind and accommodating with everybody, even when some of these people are not being so kind and accommodating. <laughs> yeah. Now, what was this level of attention a new thing for you? Um, and did any of the comments and criticisms help you in any way? Um. Actually, I'm. Uh, it was a new thing. Uh, it started, I think, like four or five years ago when Meinl put up one video where I was just jamming on some drum and bass loops, and and it was on on several uh, uh, like on Facebook and uh, a killer drum videos and, and stuff and, and I had a lot a lot of views and I remember the f- uh, even like my hero Bootsy Collins put it on his Facebook side and I was wow. like wow I, oh Jesus and and then I I was ne- I mean I was <laughs> on Facebook there was like boom 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 and I I was oh god and I have to answer these they write me so I want to be uh, a, a, Kinds of always like the first few days I was just sitting on the computer answering questions and uh, and talking to people uh, just to that point when I said now now it's enough I cannot do everything I I try to uh, if somebody has a a certain question and and I want to be uh, nice to them because I I remember when I was like a, a kid and and I heard something that that I liked I wanted to to write these guys and 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 I wanted to have an answer so I I always try to to uh be kind and to write that 
um, about the if if somebody says yeah I don't I don't like what you do or or the other guy does this so much faster or or whatever, actually I'm 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 f like I said I'm 53 I I play uh, my uh, my family and me we we we're doing good and to be to become like 53 and then maybe in a few years i'm i'm 60 and whatever and to make a a, a living of playing music as a drummer that is that is a, 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 a success i'm very happy and grateful about that and if i'm sure i have not the right hand of jojo meyer but i don't at a certain point I don't I don't care because I I, I want to do some music some original music I'm working now on my on my new, uh, own album uh and it's going to be different from from everything that I've done so far and I'm so happy to to bring that out and do that stuff I'm uh so uh, if if there are some haters around I don't take it too serious no, I understand that. I was just yeah. curious, you know, if there was anybody that left some random comment that made you suddenly reconsider something. Now, mm -hmm. considering the fact that we've talked about how so far there's been a couple of things that randomly happened in your life, like a right. DJ with a full bladder or uh, two album covers that had cows on them, you know, it made me right. wonder if there was some comment that's, that it didn't have to be a rude one, but maybe a nice right. one. Right. Something that someone said that made you think, wow. And you know, if not, that's totally cool. But I figured actually, I would actually, ask. actually, what I really liked just recently, uh, some, I, I wanted to, I was uh, practicing and I was jamming to. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm just go on YouTube and do drum and bass jam track without drums, and then there are a hundred things popping out, and then I was uh, putting on play. And then it popped out, uh, this is drum and bass. If you want to have some uh, drumming ideas, check out Jojo Mayer and Gervin Eisenhower. And that was like something that was made me really proud, even to be like uh, uh, named together with Jojo and, and stuff like that. That was like really something that made me very happy and also it, sometimes people send me uh, videos when they play some some stuff similar than what, what I do and if if I uh, answer them and say uh, and tell them how, how much I like like it if some people now if they use the the left foot hi-hat and they call it uh, the Gervin Eisenhower style that 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 makes me very very happy and I'm happy to like bring a, a little uh, uh, a little bit of a new thing to this world of drummers that that is maybe that maybe not too many people have done before and and I'm very happy to see that that it spreads out a little bit that people use it for for their music and that makes me very happy yeah it's got to be nice to get some validation for things like that right. I'm sure um so seeing the impact of these videos that that you've done, uh, did that inspire you to um, create your own videos for further for artistic and promotional endeavors for Trio Elf? Um, I hope that in the future I will be able uh, also with Meinl to do some stuff again because there is some new music coming and also groove-wise I'm working on a lot of different ideas and uh even with my my new album uh i hope i can do some 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 videos and explain some of, of the stuff that uh, that we do uh it's uh, it's gonna be very very uh ex i'm really excited about also how to uh, put my music from my album I don't know if that's possible and I'm, I'm just now working on finishing the record and to put it uh, live on a stage and it's something uh, I'm re really really uh, excited to work now with Trielf I hope we can go on the road again as soon as possible and play and I hope uh, also with my own music that I will find 
people who uh, appreciate what I'm doing and it's not just uh, like drone bassy stuff it's it goes into so many different directions not only drum but all uh, also uh, like from the whole whole music to me it's very important that uh, I don't uh, put music around my drumming it's it's for me it's uh, getting more and more that that the music that i compose on something that the drums are a part of that and and sometimes if i don't play for a minute that can be also important <laughs> oh dude i love the, it man the the, the the space is also very important Absolutely. Jeez, yeah. that right there, what you just said, should be the takeaway quote for a lot of people is that you're not, you're writing, you want music that the drums are a part of rather than it being music based around the drums. Um, yes. And, and sometimes, to me, sometimes, not, not with, uh, but there, there are drummers, especially in the, in the, vi uh, in the, videos and whatever uh, the, the music is composed around what some people drum right now and that doesn't make too much sense for me i want to uh i want the mu that the drums like you said are a part of the music and if the music don't need drums at a certain point i'm i'm happy to lay out for a, for a while and if uh, if the music just needs a uh, uh, a shaker at a certain point then there will be a shaker but if it needs a double bass a super high speed amen break then i also want to do that and <laughs> whatever it's uh, at a certain point i'm i'm more in actually and i'm interested in music more interested in music and then then into drums <laughs> to be Dude, perfect, i totally I understand i think being interested in music will make you a better drummer thank um, you yeah no i so uh, question um I, i've got one more question for you because i was going to say what's next for you but it sounds like we know what's next once we can work our way through the current situation we're all in and uh, things yeah. restrictions ease and you're able to get on the road and go more work with trio elf more uh of your own music coming out and touring behind it. Um, yeah. So my question, cause I want people to know this, where can they go to support your musical endeavors? Where can they go buy your music from? Okay. That is also, I, I thought about uh, a lot of these things a little uh, while ago. And I decided, especially for my new album that I won't bring it out on Spotify, Apple music or any of these uh, things. I'm thinking of music as it can be like a uh, like a, a bottle of a wine. You have you have a bottle of wine that is a little bit more expensive, and you can have a a, a cheaper. In in Spotify, you pay a certain money, and you get everything everything for a monthly fee. And I actually I my music I will bring it out on vinyl at a, a like a certain kind of copies and very very old school in the 80s on cassette and that's and maybe if i'm thinking about a few cds and i i want the music to be packed in a uh, like a, a, like that the cover is nice that there is uh, some I want to sign every copy and, and do a little drawing or something and uh, they they can buy it from me either on my Instagram or Facebook or maybe I will put out a website about that because then I want to have maybe just five, uh, 500 people in the world will have my music but they pay me fair and it will pay the 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 cost that I had I paid my musicians tim lefay is playing on, on the album and a lot of a lot of great players i pay them and uh, recorded music has not too much worth nowadays so i thought uh, i will make it in that way make a great 180 gram vinyl and 
a, a, a funky little tape and maybe because there's still a, a few CDs and if people really want to have my music they uh, can PayPal me I will send them the thing and then they have it and then I, I'd rather have 500 people in the whole world five in Japan 25 in the US, uh, 20 in Italy and whatever that have my music and we are a closed community and we can talk about that. But I don't, I don't want to give it uh, just away for, 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 for nothing. Here you have it because I, I think I, uh, it was so much energy and, and work to do that. And it's not a music for everybody. It's some uh, if they want to Gerben Eisenhower's m music, they will uh, get it that way. And I like like that idea. It's about the same. You have a a great wine yard, and you make five hundred wonderful bottles, and that's it. You can uh, there is no possibility to have it like uh, uh, put thousands and thousands and thousands of bottles out. And I don't want that. Yeah, no, I understand. So if people want to find your music and seek out the physical copies uh, copies to purchase and support your work, they would go to your Instagram page and find a link right. there or your Facebook page. Right. Okay, That's got it. That's how it's going to be. Okay, perfect. Um, so <laughs> one last random question. You've mentioned of Tim Lathay twice. Now, is this the guy that I saw playing bass for the German um, prog metal band Obscuro one time? Actually, I don't know. I think Tim is <laughs> is is famous for his uh, like with the Tedeschi Trucks band. That was one of his main gigs, and I think uh, the, the his work for the last David Bowie album uh, for uh, that was like the 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 thing. Also, Owen Bill should, I should also mention he's he's actually from Nashville. He played also two tracks. He played with the Roots. Uh, with Questlove for a while, Aha, wonderful cool. bass player, and he's also there. Plus, a, a, a Sebastian Geek from Trio Elf, and and a, a lot of people and singers and friends. And uh, yeah, I will definitely send you a copy. Let me please buy it, okay? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy it. I'll, I'll put money down right. for that. No, it's cool. <laughs> okay, Gerwin, hey man, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, it's I know. Um, I don't take people's time lightly. So the fact that you sat down to chat for roughly 45 minutes with us is super cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and uh, and thanks for the great questions. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for listening to Minel Radio. If you liked this episode, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. We would appreciate it very much. Thanks. And we'll see you soon.